a mobile hotspot. I will try logging in from my mobile hotspot. Okay. Okay, so Augie's yeah. gonna log out, then log back in. All right, I'm, I'm gonna call the fire chief's time we get on. Okay. Could somebody, I, I emailed Nora, could somebody try it, Nora? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who the heck am I calling here? Hostile. Okay, hopefully that works for all. You know, it's not in the uh, best location for self service where he is in the building. Yeah, they're Are we able to get back in through the hotspot? Yeah. Getting you computation though. Say I'll run I'll run the meeting. Sit there. Uh, all, right. Hey. all right, Nora didn't answer. I sent her an email, a text. Yeah, I think the original notice may have said 5 p.m. anyway. Although I, I know. do see but, Ellen. Oh, I know, but yeah. Yeah. I know it's changed. So. Let me get. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah. We can. Yeah. Okay. The only one we're having trouble hearing is the host of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That would be uh, VFF Fusco. <laughs> we're waiting for the other two. You guys are still going into executive session or you did that already? No, we did, we did. Oh, okay, all right. Ours are quick, not like, not like yours. You're not kidding. <laughs> I wish ours were quick. I think I you guys just like uh, staying at the firehouse, hanging out. <laughs> Tommy a captain? What do you say? Is Tommy a captain? Tommy will be chief next month, so he's uh, oh, okay. joining us tonight. But he's still, still captain, right? No, no, ex captain, ex captain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to change his title to ex captain Simpson. <laughs> Simpson. Make it, make it future chief. Make it future chief. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, I gotta wait that's, for the, bad, that's bad luck. We got we to wait for the votes to be counted. Okay. All right. Look at Tommy, all dressed up and doing the town. They grow up so quick. <laughs> Tommy. Yes, sir. Did you know Danielle Bender? No. I figured Louis Bender would be about your age. I, I, I knew Louis, yes. His older sister passed away. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was very tragic. Oh, my God. Terrible. Their mother was my children's babysitter for years and years and years. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, actually, I can see Augie moving again. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Well, we, we can hear, we can you, hear you. You, you, you. You're seeing you is a little bit off. We're waiting for the other two trustees. Where they went out to. I, the... did, I did text Nora, and she didn't answer her phone, but I sent her a text. I emailed her. All right. 
Oh, Nora's trying to get on. Well, I'm having a great game of Candy Crush here, so. Oh, good. At least it's not wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's give uh, Trustee Natchez another few minutes. Uh, you know, we're going to start with the fire department because they're here and they're Aren't volunteers. Are we starting at five, though? We were starting at five. You guys had no. an executive session. No, the executive session. The, the meeting started at 430. We I finished wanted, executive session. I'm sorry. I knew I wasn't a part of it, and I said I couldn't get here till five. I sent an email. So sorry if, if that's if there's any confusion. All righty. All right, so tonight, welcome to, uh, we, we opened this meeting before, welcome to the Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees budget work session. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to do the fire department and the police department. And the FD is uh, first up at bat. Uh, tonight, we are joined by Chief Costa, uh, Chief Barney, and uh, Firefighter Siemens, uh, who hopefully will be joining the ranks of chiefs in the future. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, good evening. Who's giving a presentation tonight, Chief Costa? We're uh, all going to be part of this. Uh, who wants to start? I will start with a little information about our department. Can you? Yeah. For 137 years, the all-volunteer Maranek Fire Department has provided residents of the village of Maranek with the fire protection. The fire department responds to the community's needs by providing professional services that are crucial to the safety, health, and welfare of the community. This is accomplished through the fire suppression, fire prevention, public education, and other activities. <clears throat> Investigations into the cause of fires are performed by the Westchester County Department of Emergency Services cause and origin team which works in conjunction with the Village of America Fire Department. There are five volunteer fire companies, Hook and Ladder, company number one, Mamoreau Engine and Hose, company number one, Columbia Engine and Hose, company number two, Volunteers Engine and Hose, company number three, and Holstead Manor, company ho Engine and Hose, company number four. The companies operate out of four fire stations with over 200 volunteers. The Maranek Fire Department operates five engines, two aerial trucks, four utility trucks, three chief's vehicles, and one fire boat. The department responds to approximately 800 fire emergencies a year. As any department is dependent on its volunteers, we are truly fortunate to have one of the best junior fire departments in the state. Our, our junior fire department, more commonly known as the Post 444, is part of the Boy Scouts of America uh, Venture Program. These junior members who are between the ages of 14 and 18 are overseen by senior members of the Village of Fire Department. The junior members receive the regular training in firefighting sciences, as well as search and rescue and medical emergencies. These young men and women are the future of our department, and we are so proud of the commitment and enthusiasm they bring to our department on a daily basis. Uh, the department is also proud to have the Village of Amaranek Fire Department Ladies Auxiliary amongst our ranks. The Ladies Auxiliary has been in existence for more than 90 years and play an integral role in assisting our department to be the success it is. Members of the Ladies Auxiliary have always been there to support the department in a variety of functions and are considered a welcome asset. Chief on it. Major initiatives of the fire department are the fire education and prevention effort, which involves numerous visits to school classrooms, fire prevention fairs, and training to ensure that volunteer firefighters are cognizant of current New York state and national standards of performance and maintain the necessary skills to meet those criteria. In total, the department's volunteer staff of over 200 members have devoted thousands of hours to training every year. This includes many critical and specialized subjects such as hazardous material mitigation, weapons of mass destruction, federally mandated incident management training, safe driving tactics for emergency vehicles, certified first responder training, vehicle extra extrication, water rescue operations for both Mamaroneck Harbor and Long Island Sound, physical, physical conditioning and strength training, CPR and other firefighting tactics and strategies. In addition to the standard training, we are now faced with, COVID, with a COVID-19 pandemic that requires additional training. 
Over the past year, in addition to our regular responses, the fire department has responded to, to COVID-19 emergencies, a tropical storm, and various major snowstorms. In the fiscal year of 2015-2016, the new truck for Volunteers Engine and Hose Company number three, Engine 42, was delivered. In keeping with the fleet replacement schedule, the next apparatus scheduled to be replaced is Engine 40 in fiscal year 2020-2021. Over the last few years, the fire service at the national, state, and local levels have become concerned with regard to the high incidence of cancer in firefighters and their families. Recent laws enacted by New York State have mandated that all firefighters in the state be provided cancer insurance. Both the NFPA and New York State Office of Fire Prevention and Control, part of Homeland Security, have put forth new standards and regulations regarding cancer prevention for firefighters. These standards include programs to properly clean firefighting protective equipment, including frequent washing and drying of the protective equipment. The fire department is working to purchase additional equipment necessary to properly wash and dry that gear. The fire department is working to find solutions to several upcoming changes. The changes include increased training requirements for members and a planned upgrade to the county's emergency radio system, which will render most of our apparatus mounted radios obsolete. The radio upgrade will also render all of our fire pages obsolete. This is our primary means of dispatch, and if lost, will render the fire department ineffective. Some of our ongoing large expenses include maintaining our breathing apparatus, which have a finite life and purchase of command and utility vehicles in addition to apparatus expenditures. Uh, it, it, that, that concludes the presentation. Okay. Uh, Borg, you want to give us a hand walking uh, these gentlemen through the budget here? Absolutely. Ooh. All right, Augie, Augie, it, it's no good. You, you sound like you sound like uh, you're having a rough Saturday night. <laughs> Didn't get any better. All right. That ain't working. This isn't working. Okay. I'm going to call up Wally. I'm going to do the best I can. Say something now. He's frozen. Hold on. He's in Village Hall. This right isn't there. working. No, I know. Let me send the presentations over to Dan and he, he'll do well, it. But now it's working. Try talking now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. You can hear me, but everybody else is frozen on my screen. So it's best I send the presentation to Dan. Okay. Send it to Dan. Mr. Sonoff, you're going to be leading the parade tonight. And you're muted if you're trying to say something. Just waiting for the email from the clerk treasurer and then I will uh, be able to share the screen. Hi. Hey, Chief. How are you? No, actually, actually, Augie looks like he's caught up now. Yeah.
So it looks like it's starting to work better, the internet now. Yeah, Augie, we hear you well. And you're not, your video is good too. And I don't use special lights either, like Mr. Sarnoff. Well, that, perhaps that's why your video didn't look that good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like saying the, uh, the evening show will be, uh, will be better. <laughs> So we have the fire department budget up right now and we're going to go through it. Dan, do you want me to go through it or do you want to go through it? Uh, you can go through it, actually. Uh, actually, it's saying you need a username and password to download this. So I think that may be an issue anyway. So, Okay, so sorry for the technical difficulties this evening. Um, you've heard the presentation from the fire department. Now we're going to go through the line items. Are there any specific questions or you just want me to start from the top and work my way down? Why don't you start from the top and work your way down until we get the questions? Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm on page one, and as you'll note that there's no increases in the cleaners uh, that, that remain flat at 0%. Uh, the cleaners obviously uh, clean up the, uh, the firehouses, uh, restrooms, kitchens, floors uh, to keep it clean. And since, you know, the fire department is highly infectious to cancer, keeping a clean firehouse is very important. Uh, we're able to maintain these cleaners at the same level of expense as the previous year. Uh, miscellaneous equipment has remained flat in there. Um, just, uh, just let me ask the chief, what, what, what is miscellaneous equipment? Miscellaneous equipment is, it, where, where are you, under uh, 220? First page, uh, under equipment uh, make, and make capital it, outlay. Make, so, so, Tom, if I can answer so that question, the miscellaneous equipment, equipment is, is going to be office source. equipment. Okay. That's office. That's under office equipment, correct? That's okay. what you're talking about? Miscellaneous yes. equipment. Yes. Right. That's going to be computers. That's going to be anything that has to do with any type of uh, administrative stuff we need. All right. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Okay. The next item here is where you'll see an increase is the turnout gear. The turnout gear, the reason why there's an increase of 165% is because last year we completely zeroed it out. Um, this year we have 14 uh, turnout pieces of equipment that are going to expire that need to be replaced. We put into the budget uh, only 12 pieces hoping to get by. The new members, we put in the budget for four new sets of gears. We usually get about five to six members a year. But once again, for the new members, we're gonna to try to get by with salvaging whatever equipment we could find on as far as turnout gear is concerned. Keep in mind also that the turnout gear went up by 5%. Uh, dress uniforms, we added to the budget uh, $5,000. Dress, that, that's basically a thousand per firehouse. Each uniform is $400. So it buys two uniforms for each firehouse. And that's the increase on page one. Any questions? No, we, zero, we zeroed out the turnout gear last year because we had a grant. That's correct. Okay. But the reason why it shows that it's a 165% increase, because that's what you're baselining off of. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. Sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, on page two, there's a small increase. So on page two, fire hoses remained flat. Um, Scott packs, there was a 19% increase. Um, that's attributed basically to the price increase of the actual packs. Um, we adjusted them to price. Um, the first line had 13,600. We put just one harness at 10,000. That's the cost, the actual cost of it. Uh, the new uh, bottles five at 1300 each comes out to 6500 and OSHA require a mask they're putting in the budget five this year um, to give out to the firefighters at 1625 uh, miscellaneous equipment has remained flat um, everything else remained flat on this page other than training and conference that was reduced by ten thousand dollars that's a 66% increase, decrease. That's a, that's a line that we would, uh, we would like to try to get back up because uh, due to COVID and other things that were, were happening, we could not do any training and, um, and, or, in, or attend any conferences. 
Uh, there are multiple conferences and, and at these conferences, there are training sessions, whether they're hands-on or they are uh, classroom uh, training sessions. Um, we're, uh, we're trying to push the initiative of uh, training and, and the fact that we need to continue training. Um, 5,000 is, 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 a, is a big drop in that, in that line. And um, I'm hoping that I can at least get that line back to 10,000 if that's possible. Cause that's, that's, that's something, you know, we got to, it's ongoing every day training and, uh, and educating ourselves. Hello. Next page. Yeah. On page three, all of the relative expenditures have remained flat. Um, fuel and lubricants are in line. Um, to the prior year's adopted budget. Uh, supplies and firehouse remained flat. Um, as you can see on there, your utilities all remained flat. Unless there are any specific questions, there's no increases in this, this year's uh, budget on these items. Okay, let's go next page. Bulk of these expenditures on this page are all the contractual services um, listed here. Uh, these expenditures also have all remained flat. Except the, the fireman's cancer benefit. Except, Except for the fire the cancer reason. benefit. That's the fire cancer benefit uh, is, alloc is, is posted in 1910 central insurance. I see something here, Augie. 210. 210. We have put it originally in the fire department. It really should be reflected on the central insurance, not the fire department budget. Oh, so this is different from what I have. Okay. Okay, this was changed from what I got. Okay. So 210 goes out of here. It was moved to 1910. Okay. Uh, annual physicals. Uh, Chief, are, are, are the men and women going to get their physicals? Yes, they are. Every year we have to do the physicals and uh, um, it's required. And each year there's different stages of uh, the amount of members that get it depending on age. So uh, one year is going to be more than other years, but at that line, we should be fine. Is that uh, required for interior five fires? That is correct, sir. Anybody have any other questions about anything else on this page? Augustino, next page. Page five, all the expenditures have remained flat. Um, if there's anything in particular you want to discuss, uh, other than that, everything remains flat. You're on the board, have any questions? So Augie, at the at the bottom, I think the bottom line is that this this year's budget, if I'm reading this right, is a six point seven three percent increase over last year. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it should be known that a majority of that increase is going to be related to the turnout gear. Yeah, that mm -hmm. uh, we added back into the budget that was cut last year. Yeah, understood. So if, yeah, almost every other line was kept at zero. Yeah. Right. So we don't want to penalize because we got a grant. No, exactly, Nor. Exactly. And we do it this way also because we want to replace the gear. Uh, you know, we want to stagger it. We don't want to end up with 45 sets of gear in one year. So we, yeah. we replace them as needed when they expire each year. Okay. Does anybody on the board of trustees have any other questions before I go to the budget committee? Okay. Uh, 
Orgy, uh, Ellen Hauptman has her hand up. Absolutely. Just give me one second. Sure. Ellen, please unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I noticed as you were going through where you were saying a lot of the expenses are flat, we hadn't necessarily been spending at that trend so far this year. And Chief Costa wanted to add money for training and conferencing. So maybe some of that can be shifted. Like on page one, there was some harness something where you kept the budget flat and we've spent nothing so far. So I think um, we could probably- Which, which line things. are you looking at? I, um, I'll tell you in a moment. Uh, bailout system harness, where there is 20,000 planned, we've spent nothing. That, that money will be spent because we have to purchase X amount uh, per year and okay. it's usually done it's it's towards uh you know march april we purchase those uh units okay and but you may want to go through some of the other line items to see if mm -hmm. you could do some shifting into training and conference money i would like to say i could do that but it's uh, right now it's it's kind of tight because um right now i have to start purchasing and doing things that are required for the fire department um that we couldn't do because of covid okay so there's a lot of things you know for 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 safety and and uh training requirements and everything we need to operate this department to provide the public safety um we we need these these lines uh and we need to use them uh as much as we can to purchase what we need um nothing is in, in this budget is for fun this is all for emergency services oh, no i get that i was just trying to see if we could ship some money for you I got you. Thank you. What else in the uh... Chief, on, on that note, what's the situation with the radios? We spent what's that? The situation with the radios. We we, we know the larger issue of, mm -hmm. of the uh, the county upgrade and uh, ex captain explained it well, but just, just mm -hmm. looking at the lines, uh, mm -hmm. the actual expenditure is four thousand and change. Uh, but the figure is larger. Is that are you waiting to buy them? What is what is the what's the status? Where would that take you? In, in you know in a, in a nutshell, I know it's, it is a larger topic, but so basically that you're talking about two fifty six, correct? Radio equipment two fifty six, correct? Right. Yeah. So so basically, um, I have to purchase pagers and I have to purchase additional chargers for our radios. Um, I have to have vendor come in and it's been difficult with COVID, uh, to go over everything we need to go over. And now that we're kind of opening up a little bit, um, I'm going to have them come in and, and we're going to spec what we need. Exactly. The pagers, I know exactly what I need, but there's chargers and other, um, devices that I need that I need to have the vendor come in for. So that money is definitely going to be spent because it's, it's a major, uh, um, the communication is a major issue. We need to get that taken care of. So, Chief, on that same issue, are you mm -hmm. expecting that after this, after the 2021-22 fiscal year budget expenditures on the radios and pagers, that we will be up to date with the new system, or is this going to be something that's going to come up again the next fiscal year as well? I'm trying to get a sense of when are we going to be compliant with the county system. So, it's not only being compliant with the county system; is upgrading and and maintaining our equipment uh last year or i think it was last year i uh, sent you guys information in reference to everything that is done with that particular line it has to do with software updates has to do with licenses for our radio frequencies um and basically right now we're trying to purchase we're with the grant we're purchasing 20 uh pagers we're going to purchase more pages with this line and then the next budget we're going to have we're going to have to purchase more um and we also have a situation where the county is only supplying X amount of radios, and this would be radios for frontline apparatus. So the frontline apparatus um, will have a radio from the county, um, but they are not supplying any of the utilities, the, the, the additional utilities or spare equipment. Um, with negotiations with the county, I was able to 
uh, add utility nine, which is which we are considering a frontline apparatus that they did not consider, but it is a frontline uh, apparatus. I was able to get that ninety five hundred dollar radio added to this vehicle. So the radios that we have to purchase eventually, we're not going to do them all in one shot. Or the new system is it's a cost of ninety five hundred dollars per per uh, apparatus per vehicle. So this is ongoing, and we're trying not to you know purchase everything in one year. Um, we're gonna we're we're gonna stagger the purchases. And, and excuse me, when you say per vehicle, do you mean fire truck or other vehicles? Um, we have fire trucks. We have uh, utility vehicles, which okay. are, and we have a spare chief's vehicle. So all, the um, vehicles, all the vehicles. Yes, all the vehicles. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Thanks. Thank you. All, all the frontline vehicles, right? The, the frontline. Most of the frontline vehicles are being supplied by the county. Um, they're only supplying. Um, so the radios are broken down as, as uh, two different devices in the, in the apparatus. There's a front device and a pump panel device or a secondary device. They're only giving us one device. So we have to, we have to add that into, uh, uh our upgrades also, but we're not going to do this all in one year, but that's why it's important to have this line. And we're going to do our best to try to, um, uh, do this over a couple of years. Keith, maybe you can help explain a little bit better <clears throat> so I better understand. The $9,500 is you're saying for the radio for the, each vehicle for the client or compatible with the county. Is that correct? This, this is for communications interoperability with the Westchester County Department of Emergency Services who dispatches us. Um, this also has to do with mutual aid going to other departments and other towns and villages and cities to assist. Um, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I understand that. I'm not asking what it does. I'm saying it's $9,500 per vehicle, mm -hmm. correct? And correct. How, how many vehicles have that at the moment? Right now, none of them because the system is not in place yet. It's, it's happening okay. this year. And the county is... The county is giving you the $9,500 for each for each frontline vehicle? They are giving us the radios. They are supplying us with the radios, and they are installing the radios. They are not giving us money. Okay. So then what is the $9,500 per vehicle for? Then I'm curious. So previously I said it was for the frontline vehicles that the county is supplying the radios for. I have additional vehicles utility vehicles that also need those radios because those those vehicles will go in place of a frontline vehicle if the frontline vehicle is down for maintenance or repair and how many of the vehicles are not frontline vehicles according to the county the number is approximately four and most of them being utilities. That's why I could stagger doing one a year or depending on uh, um, what's happening with the budget, uh, do more than one. Okay. Any, other, any other questions? All right, chiefs and uh, possibly future chief. Uh, thank you all for uh, an excellent presentation. Thank you all for everything you do. Uh, I appreciate the efforts that were put into the, the lines that you kept at zero. Uh, these are tough times. And uh, since the majority of uh, your members live in this community, I appreciate the effort uh, to not only protect the taxpayers and the residents, but to save the taxpayers money. Okay, thank Tom, I, Tom, I have a couple more questions if I can. I'm having- Okay, sure. Um, I just, I'm trying to understand them better. On, on line, it says purchase of new Scott packs, uh, $10,000. I thought we just bought a whole bunch of Scott packs. Is this the no, or not? We, we, we purchased the, the, uh, bottle, the Scott bottle, the air pack, the air bottle. I'm sorry. The SCBA air pack is the device that holds the bottle. We purchased the air bottles, the tank that you see on our back when we're fighting a fire. Okay, and, and they don't fit into the existing ones that hold the bottles? 
Of course they do. That's for the replacement of a new, to purchase a new Scott pack if needed. The Scott pack is the device that you mount the bottle to. Yeah, the, don't they have a useful life, Chief? The packs yes. themselves? Was yeah, they, years? they do. Yeah, well, it depends on the NFPA standard uh, at the yeah. time of purchasing. Um, but the uh, bottles were replaced and yes, they were purchased recently because every year we try to update or replace bottles that are going to expire because they have a shelf life also. So we're, we're buying additional bottles and Scott packs is what you're saying. Uh, that's correct. It's an ongoing thing because we're not going to, we can't replace every Scott bottle in one year. So we stagger the purchases on purpose. Which is what a few years ago we asked you, uh, the fire department to do. Yep. Probably more of yep. an art than a science, right? Because you don't know if you're going to use, you don't know when you're going to use them and how many you're going to use. You just have to have them in case you need them. Well, we have them on every apparatus and it's required by an FPA to have X amount of bottles right. per pack. No, I guess what I'm saying so. is you might have some that, that, that lasted longer, but they expire. So you just yeah, well, they, right. stagger the replacements so that you're all in sync. They have a shelf life. Right, exactly. Do you have any other questions for the fire department? No, and I'm sorry if I was late. I The meeting was called for five and there was an executive session that I wasn't privy to at 4.30. So I really was trying to get here at five, not at 4.30. So I'm sorry for any confusion. You didn't miss much, Nor. Don't worry about no. it. <laughs> um, all right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. And uh, I, I won't re-say everything I just said, but thank you for all you do for our community. Thank okay. you. Thank you all. I appreciate you listening to us and uh, we appreciate anything you could do for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night. Thank you too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the next up is uh, the police department headed by the ever popular Chief DeRuza. Oh, sure. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, Chief. Good evening. So um, I'm going to try to do something if I can. I'm going to try to share my screen. I did a quick presentation. Um, so hopefully this is going to work because I'm not that adept at Zoom. So let, let's see. Is that okay? Can I start? Yeah, of course. Please do. Okay. Okay. So just give me a second here. Let me just get ready. Okay. Okay, can everybody <laughs> see my screen? Yes, you know, I just want to point out before we get into this chief, uh, yes. that village, village manager Barbario is not here tonight because he is uh, on taking a furlough day. Okay. Okay, I just want to point that out. Okay, so okay, go ahead, chief. Okay, if there's any problems, let me know. Okay. So the first thing I want to start off with is we did implement a new acronym for the Village Manic Police Department. So as you can read there, it's vision, mindfulness, professionalism, and dedication. I've also included our Village Manic Police Department's mission statement, which I just take a moment to read to you. We, the members of the Village Manic Police Department strive to promote an enhanced quality of life for all who live and work in the village in which we serve. With dedication to professionalism and integrity in our duties, we pledge to maintain a safe and friendly community. In partnership with the community, we pledge to protect the lives and property of our fellow citizens and impartially enforce the law, fight crime through prevention by, and by aggressively pursuing violators of the law, maintain a higher standard of integrity than is generally expected of others because so much is expected of us, and value human life, respect the dignity of each individual, and render our services in a professional, courteous, and civil manner. So I've also included here our Belgium Manic Police organizational chart. So as you can see, it's the chief of police, 
who is also supported by an administrative assistant and an IT specialist. From there, we have what we're calling three different divisions. We have what is now called our community services division, which is formerly the patrol division. So underneath community services, we have two patrol lieutenants and we have our four different squads. Uh, three of the squads are rotating eight to four, four to 12 schedule. And one is a steady midnight tour. We also have two special operations units. One consists of bicycles and one includes our traffic unit. Under investigations, we have a detective sergeant as a supervisor who is in charge of four general investigation detectives and two youth uh, and domestic violence detectives. And they are supported by an office assistant and a multimedia processing clerk. Under administration, we have our training sergeant who is responsible for our non-sworn personnel, which includes our parking enforcement officers, our school crossing guards, and our watch persons. Just some background information. So we know the village of Maranek has approximately 19,000 residents, which might end up being more according to the new census results. We are approximately 3.2 square miles, which includes land and water. The village of Maranek Police Department is budgeted for 51 sworn police officers and more than 40 other employees, including bay constables, administrative staff, part-time employees, and seasonal employees. We currently have a fleet of 30 vehicles, which includes two motorcycles, two boats, seven hybrid engine vehicles, 16 gas engine vehicles, one canine vehicle, one prisoner van, and one trailer, and four of the gas engine vehicles will be replaced this year with hybrid vehicles. Some statistics. So I listed here for the last couple of years, we know that last year was kind of an anomaly because of COVID. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute. So as you can see, for most of our numbers in 2020, the numbers went down. Um, so our calls for service went down a little bit. Um, our moving violations and our parking violations did go down. Um, moving violations because there were less motorists on the road and also because we wanted to limit the interaction of our officers with the public to secure everyone's protection with COVID. Uh, for the parking violations, those went down as well for some of the same reasons and also that we weren't enforcing a lot of the metered parking. Um, our arrests went down. Uh, our criminal investigations did go up because our, our crimes that were reported um, did go up and I'll get into that in the next couple of slides. Um, our youth investigations interactions did go down a little bit because schools were not in session. Um, our domestic violence incidents did go up um, and that as you can imagine with COVID um, thankfully, there wasn't a lot of violent uh, incidents, um, mostly verbal type disputes over um, custody type visitation issues or verbal disputes involving uh, financial issues um, due to loss of work and things because of COVID. Um, our training hours did go down as well because there were not a lot of uh, uh, trainings that were being offered uh, during the pandemic. So uh, a little bit about our crimes. So, for reporting, there's two types of offenses, part ones and part twos. So our part one offenses are considered the violent crimes. Um, so they're listed there, your murder, negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, and motor vehicle theft. So if you look at our numbers, our numbers um, last year in 2002 uh, did go up for reported one offenses, those mostly being uh, larcenies. Um, we did have a short time there where we had a lot of issues of uh, things being taken out of motor vehicles. So things being taken out of motor vehicles is different than motor vehicle theft. Correct. Yes. Uh, we did have some motor vehicle theft uh, last year as well. Um, I could probably tell you that number. Let's see. Motor vehicle theft for, we had 13 last year. Um, so our part two offenses are considered to be the less violent types of crimes. Um, also, let's see, in 2020, our numbers went down a little bit, um, but I can tell you that a lot of those had to do with identity theft uh, type crimes, fraud. We were seeing a lot lately with um, people claiming falsely for unemployment for other people. Um, so that, that is something that we're seeing 
um, in addition to the grandparent schemes um, that have been going on as well. So some of our accomplishments, even though it was a crazy year for 2020, uh, we did hire and train two new officers. We promoted and trained one new patrol lieutenant. We appointed and trained a new detective. We completed the installation of new console equipment at the communications desk. We replaced some of the cameras at our headquarters due to some damage that was sustained from Tropical Storm Isais. We did participate in the Vision Zero initiative, as well as some various New York State traffic enforcement initiatives once the pandemic started to um, lessen. Uh, we completed our departmental tra training in both bail reform and discovery. We were able to maintain a high level of service to the community during the COVID-19 pandemic. We provided safety and security for several events that happened throughout the village, um, the latter half of the, uh, the year. And we participated in some of the police reform and reinvention meetings. Some of our goals for next year would be to complete the process for New York State accreditation, update and revise our current manual procedure, institute the police reform recommendations as given to the governor, acquire and deploy body worn cameras, continue to enhance our departmental training, that being procedural justice and implicit bias, de-escalation, crisis intervention training, persons with special needs, victims of domestic violence. We would like to implement the ABLE, the Active Bystandership Program, implement community liaison officers, increase community engagement, reinstitute foot patrols, and create a Village of Maranick uh, webpage and an Instagram page. Um, so those are our goals for next year, and that is it. Thank you, Chief. Uh, does anybody on the board have any questions about the presentation? Trustee Natchez, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, could you go back to your last slide? There was something on there that uh, caught me on that. Yes. Your last uh, slide. Yep. So let me just bring that back up. And again, just give me a second. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through it real quick here and bring it down to the end. There we go. Slide. Yes. So what is number six? Okay. So number six is the active bystandership for law enforcement program. So what that is, it's duty to intervene. So basically if an officer sees another officer who's acting inappropriately, um, the unfortunate example I can use is a, a use of force, excessive use of force, to give the officers the tools and the confidence to be able to stop that officer, no matter what rank um, that officer holds. I think we discussed this, didn't we, at the PRRC meeting? That is one yeah. of the issues, that, yes, the trains that did come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'll just mention that shortly after that meeting, I heard a, a big story about this training on NPR, and it's, it's, it really sounds amazing. It's getting a lot of attention with police reform efforts. And it, it really seems like from the academic end of things, very successful and innovative and amazing stuff. And a lot of people are looking to sign up for it. So we're just we're just waiting for the go ahead from them in terms of when they can schedule us. How, it, how it, was, uh, it was a topic of uh, much discussion with the yeah. uh, police reform committee. I'm sorry, you had a question? You know, I, I'm sure we'll get it to, it to it on the actual budget pages. I'm just wondering how much this training costs. So this training is actually no cost. So the actual training is completed via Zoom. So we're going to have two officers who are going to complete that training and then they will give it to the rest of the department. And the goal is to try to do that as part of one of our training days. Thanks. We'll look forward to that, Chief. Thank you. Sure. Okay, let's go through the budget. Well, you want to run us through it? Absolutely. Uh, give me one second, please. So on page one, we have uh, Mr. Sarnoff, do you want me to run through this or do you want to go through it? No, you seem to be back to uh, uh, optimal, efficient working order. So please do so. Mr. Fosco. Absolutely. On page one, we have the salaries. Um, these are governed by the current bargaining agreement that we have in place. Um, so 
everything is there is contractual on page one. I'm going to move to page two unless there is any specific questions. Uh, just uh, one item, Augie. You know the uh, the salaries were brought up at a prior uh, discussion. Uh, the P right now we are currently out of contract with the PBA, so because we don't have a current contract, uh, the salary there's no salary increases reflected in uh, the tentative budget. Uh, just so just let me point out that uh, I think that the uh, PBA contract and uh, it, its machination should be a discussion of an executive session. That'll be for the future. Yep. Okay. The only thing reflected here are any step increases. Wherever is that top right now remains at top. So you'll see some changes uh, and some not. The some nots are already at max pay um, and there's no increases and there's no step increases at this point. Here are the longevity for all of the officers. Once again, longevity is governed by the contract. Our permanent uh, administrative staff, uh, Kathy Ronhan. Her, she's a union member. Her salary is governed by the CSEA contract. That's why it is an increase there. That's why it is an increase. And Powers is a non represented individual. She's secretary to the chief, and she's listed there with no increase. And both have, both employees follow the CSEA as far as longevity goes. The sick incentive, we left flat. This year, due to COVID, we had an unusual year. We felt 90,000 was good. The part-time clerical. Just, Augie, just, just so, can we just walk through how the sick incentive works just so for people who haven't had experience with it? So basically in, in the contract, what we do is we offer an incentive for people not to take time off on sick or abuse sick time. Um, if you take zero sick time off, you get the maximum allotment. Uh, if you take up to seven sick days, you lose any type of payout uh, as far as the incentive goes. That's a very simple explanation of it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Dan, if you would like to add, feel free to jump in anytime. No, you, you covered it uh, perfectly, Augie. Um. Next, we have the budget for the school crossing guards. Um, they do our both right neck and Mermanic schools, uh, monitor the uh, crosswalks and so whatnot. Um, and we have a list there of the budget, what it costs us to keep our school guards in place. Uh, the Harbor Patrol, it's uh, our division of the Harbor, which monitors our coastal waters within Mermanic. Um, and those are the respective budgets there. As you would note, the increases for Marina has been leveled and the increases in the school guards were slightly, increase in school was slightly increased for different reason, programs that we're going to try to do with, in and around the schools, especially during this pandemic. Right, and they actually, because the schools, Mamaronek, the school district, um, they changed their scheduling. So we had to have the school crossing guards present during right. that shift change for the schools. So that's why that right. was. We were having school crossing guards at lunchtime. Correct. Because they were doing half days. Uh, crossing guards, let me just ask, crossing guards and uh, bay constables, they're non-represented, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. I have a quick, quick question before before the crossing guards. There's a new clerical position, administrative uh, intern supports. What what is this, the support he's doing or he yes. or she's doing? Yep. So it's a him. It's a new thing? And it's yes. So he's the multimedia processing clerk. So because of bail reform and discovery, he assists with gaining all the data and information, the evidence that has to go to the DA's office. That includes any kind of audio, video, hard copy reports, uh, anything of that nature, he put that together for us. So when the state did bail reform, 
they, they didn't they didn't give us any resources to deal with bail reform. That's correct, and it's it's a full time job. But it was prior to this the detective sergeant was doing it, and that left him hardly any time to, for his other duties. Yeah, and, and overall, it's a three thousand dollar increase in the budget from adopted to proposed. So it's basically a combine uh, uh, combining the part time clerical and the other part time clerical positions. So. I have a question and it might be for Jerry, but it's about the crossing guards. Is that part of what we're getting reimbursed for the, because we had to add the additional shifts. Is that part of the FEMA reimbursement? Um, well, we're currently uh, working on the application. Um, I, I believe it is, but I can confirm that with FEMA. It might be plus we could get back. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll confirm that and follow up with the board. Thanks. Okay. Continue. Next on page six, we have the watch persons. Uh, they they monitor our parks. Uh, we have Florence, Stanley, Warren, and Columbus Park. Uh, their season is April through December. Uh, that line has remained flat. Uh, overtime, overtime has also remained flat. Overtime is used for officers to go to court work over uh, hours if in case anything comes up uh, during the year. And we've been pretty much on target with that number. Last year was 552, this year we're, bunching, we're budgeting 555. So that number seems to be a good number. Uh, that, that, that is not, that's exclusive of like uh, Con Ed overtime or uh, you know, where, where we're doing. Uh... Yeah, that's exclusive, absolutely. Okay. okay. What Tom's referring to, in the past, uh, a while ago, we used to do special detail. And that special detail, when the money came in, we used to net it against this number. Now we're just doing a gross up in this number to see exactly what we're expending. So everybody understands. Okay. Thank All you. of the pay is a function of the contract. And as you see there, there's a slight increase from 265 to 285. Next, we have equipment and capital outlay um, for furniture, chairs, desk, carpets, 1500 that remained flat. Moving on to page two. Um, overall, the this equipment and capital outlay line in total is down by 17%. Um, as you can see, they're listed there. The miscellaneous bikes and accessory, we reduced that by 38% from 32.5 to 2,000. Chief worked hard on this budget to try to meet the mandates of 10% of 0.2s and 0.4s. Yes. Um, the next line has remained flat at 89,700. That's the cleaning line, work shoes, new office outfit, upgraded replacement, damaged uniform, and rest replacement. Um, Trending in the last two years of actual expenditures, 89.7 seems to be a pretty good number, so we stayed there. Uh, uniforms and school guards, that number was reevaluated and reduced by 21%. We went from replacement upgrades from 1,400 to 1,000, and the new employees stayed flat at 500. The next item is the new radios. We kept it flat at 8,100. The goal of the new radios is to replace X amount of radios per year and not do all of them at once. Um, it'll right. help us. We won't have to go out to bond on these radios if we do them all at once, and we'll save on the interest. So the plan here is to buy four or five radios per year. Please stop me if anybody has any questions. Uniforms and accessories. Um, this line has been reduced from 1900 to 1000 to 47% decrease. Uh, printing and stationery has also slightly been reduced by 10%. Uh, postage has also been reduced from 2000 to 1500. Keeping in line with prior years two, two year actuals, the reductions will accommodate the expenditures for the current year per our projections. Page 10. We continue our contractual expenditures. 
uh, most of which have remained flat. New publications were reduced from 500 down to 100 for an overall decrease of 18% in this budget line. Uh, training and conferences went from 4,000 to 3,000, a 25% reduction. Uh, automotive repairs stayed flat. Looking at the last two years of expenditures, the 25,000 will hold. A uh, few oil and lubricants. That number has been slightly decreased based on the actuals from 2019 and 20. Once again, the chief reviewed the budget and tried to meet the decree and she met it by reviewing these lines. And I'm hoping with the hybrids that that will help out with that too. Mm -hmm. Supplies. Supplies has a 13% reduction. Um, contract services. Um, contract services overall has been reduced by 12%. Um, there's various items in contract services. Anybody have any specific questions? I'm sure the chief could answer in detail. Uh, fees. Fees was reduced by 6%. Ammunition and firearms stayed flat from 13,400 to 13,400. Uh, the training chief, program hold on, also hold on, flat. Hold on, hold on. Sure. Chief, the Ammunition for firearms, most of that goes to when they go, have to go to the range? That's correct. We go, we qualify two times per year and that's every officer. Okay. I, I just want people to know that, that that ammunition is being expended in training. Thank correct. You. Tom, can I continue? Yeah, Mayor, please. Can okay. I continue? Yeah. Uh, so overall training conferences, the training program has remained flat at 13,950 to 13,950. Navigation law enforcement. This line item was reduced by 3.668% uh, from 27,200 to 26,200. And the contractual expenses in total were down by 10%, meeting the 10% requirement. The total police department budget went up by 2.03%. Any questions at this point? Yeah, what's the Marine Radio if it, well, we would keep, you've, you, you had the, you had 2,300 in last year's budget and 2,300 in this year's budget. Is that a new radio or? or so it's either when they, right. So if we have to replace the radios, if there's repairs that have to be done to them, that's what that line is for. And what did we spend last year? Yeah. Specifically for that marine radio and antenna or the whole line? Uh, eat both. <laughs> Okay, so in 2019, we spent 25,191. In 2020, we spent 20,119 during the pandemic period. Um, last year's adopted budget was 27,000. It was reduced down to 26,200. You really have to look at the 2019 year where we, we actually had a lot of activity. We spent 25,191. A 2% increase on that would bring you to 26,200. And they also carry portable radios as well. And right now we have nine Bay Constables. Okay. Any other questions in that line? Or we continue? Um, off street parking. These are our PEOs that monitor our streets. Their contractual CSCA, those salaries are governed by the CSCA contract. Uh, the overtime is in line with what we actually spent the last two years. Uh, right now we've increased our monitoring period on the, on the avenue and that's what that accounts for. Uh, the replacement and repair and the uniform, it's all contractual. Uh, it stayed flat from 29 to 29. 
Well, okay, when you say we increased the monitoring time, can you tell me where we went, what we did and where we went to? Yeah, remember the meters on the avenue? Uh, everybody used to, maybe Sandy could speak better at this than I, but I remember we used to cut off at a certain time when they went home. Yeah. We yes. extended the time to like six, seven o'clock. Correct. Yeah. So it used to, right. So now it goes till eight o'clock. It used to only be till six o'clock. So, yeah, it was, so what, when do when do we when do we start and when do we end? Is my question. Time wise. Right. So it goes. So they're they're in force from nine a.m. till eight p.m. Eleven hours. When 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 the when the hours were extended, it was less expensive to. Uh, just budget scheduled overtime than to hire uh, a for a, another PEO. So as you can see, it's about uh, 40, uh, yeah, savings about 40, uh, $42,000 a year. Just offer overtime as opposed to hiring additional personnel. Does that actually offset the extra revenue we get with the meters going from six to eight? I mean, I'm just I, I, I had a report run a couple of years ago by, uh, well, then it was Complus, now it's Passport. Um, I, I'll see if I can dig that up. Uh, obviously, I can't speak for this year. I mean, uh, hopefully 2020 is uh, the exception uh, to the rule. Yeah. But um, I, I believe the numbers were, it showed that we were definitely increasing uh, what we were bringing in on an annual basis. But I'll, I'll see what I can find on that okay. for you. Thank you. So uh, when, just, just to go back to the um, avenue uh, again, um, we have them work one person each day. Is that what we're doing? Or are That's we correct. letting it or how, how are we doing that, Chief? Right, so one person works from six to eight. They, they you know, between all the four of them, they, they take turns. Uh, I'm sorry, they were, I thought they, you said from nine to eight. So now we're, what's six? So I'm we, sorry. Right, so the the scheduling of them, so the overtime only goes from six to 8 p.m. And we start at nine, correct? So, um, yes. I'm trying to think now. I believe it's 8 a.m. I think it's 8, Chief. It's yeah. 8 on the avenue. 8 on the avenue. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll see Grace every so often. Yes. Uh, when, I, uh, when I'm in, when I get in a little bit early. So I, I know she's out there yes, she uh, before I get in most mornings. And the um, they also do the street cleaning as well. Yeah. <laughs> the regular... The regular uh, have, do we have so, any... I'm sorry. What? Do we have any statistics that show um, where most of the violations uh, in parking are? What time frame? Is it the is it the evening? You know, the six to eight, six to eight. Is it you know the nine to eleven? Or so we have any um, idea of that, Chief? I, I can probably address that because I think the report that I referred to earlier, right, yeah. I think may have had information like that, but I can always. Um, Ask passport, ask passport uh, to uh, run some uh, reports if uh, if we need them. Okay, chief can too. Uh, but I think it would be better to run 219, uh, 2019 than last year uh, because correct the par the parking last year is not typical. Say typical. So if they ran 2018 and 2019, that would give a, a, a much better picture of what, what was actually going on. Unless I'm wrong, Chief, would that be a reasonable approach or not? Yes, I agree. So Dan, if you could do that, that would be helpful. Yeah, like I said, I'll try to get up the report uh, from a couple of years ago, because the trustee at the time had asked about uh, the effectiveness of the six to eight time frame. Uh, so I, I think it might be broken down to into several hour uh, sections, but I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find that report first. And then I will uh, ask for a more detailed uh, report. 
Thank you, Jim. Oh, you want to continue? Absolutely. And on the last page, uh, last page, um, everything has pretty much remained flat. The overall uh, budget for PV has gone down by 1.99. It's gone down by 1.99, excuse me. Yeah, and that, that, that's with the mandated uh, increases and people get steps and stuff like that. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. does anybody on the board have any other questions before I go to the budget committee? Just Mayor, I had one thing. I, I think, I don't know if we missed it in, in terms of 3150, um, both of those uh, lines 10 um, for matrons and prisoner meals were both reduced as well uh, due to bail reform. Um, less people that have to be held for arraignments, they get released on appearance tickets. So the, those numbers went down as well. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or concerns from the board? All right, uh, Augie, would you go to Mr. Tippett? Good evening, board members. So uh, a couple of questions. If we go back uh, on the police expenses, firing range, uh, it said 3,000 and then the tentative budget said zero. Have we changed the firing range? I believe that is in another line item. What, where, where, where was it moved to? Okay, it's under 3120 0432 uh, line, I'm sorry, 0443 line 180 range fees. We only use one outside uh, range now. And the, the other one was we had um, interpreter for $2,000. Uh, have we exited that because we have more bilingual officers and it's not necessary? That and we also have what's called language line. So it's a phone service that we can utilize from the desk. So if an, uh, someone needs interpreter, we use that and there's no there's no cost to that one. Okay. Uh, you did mention uh, as part of the police reform and it's not in the budget, uh, body cameras? Yeah. We, so, we be looking to purchase that this year. I'm sure it's going to be under capital. And is there any other items that you can think of that we would need to uh, purchase this year as part of the police reform package? Good question. So um, there are a couple of things. So yes, we're right now in the process of getting quotes from two manufacturers for body cameras. Uh, to see if that's something that we can, one, get some grant money for, um, and then also it might have to be um, out of the capital budget. Um, also, as um, part of reform, um, there might be some training courses um, that we might want to attend so that might be an expenditure, but hopefully we have enough money in our current budget for that. Um, the only other thing which we might incur some fees would be as part of our uh, being accredited. There are certain guidelines um, that we need to make sure that we adhere to. Um, so there might be something um, in there. For example, there, there's one item um, as part of accreditation that's a, a, a mandate um, for evidence. So one of those items, we might have to create a, an enclosure uh, or any vehicles that are impounded impounded due to evidentiary uh, value. Um, so that is one item that might come up as part of a, an increase in the budget. And um, 
I'm assuming that you're going to be looking for three frontline police cars again this year. And again, are we putting that in the capital budget? That came out of uh, grant funding, correct, Dan? Yeah, that was for, 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 talking about for next year's budget. Oh, for next year. Okay. Yeah, the three vehicles are not included in the uh, general fund budget this year. You're looking um, to do it in capital fund. Well, that's a discussion we want to have with the board, but uh, that was, I think it's one of the uh, purposes of this budget, of these budget meetings to go over some of these policy matters. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll have to have that discussion. And one uh, comment on the um, parking enforcement. Um, I believe they get off at eight o'clock, but because they have to do their paperwork and such, basically the avenue was clear by probably about uh, 20 to eight or so. Is there any way to just stagger somebody so that they uh, they finish at 8.30? That way you can have coverage for that last half hour because that's probably one of our busiest half hours of parking. And basically, everybody knows on the avenue you know by 20 to 8 you don't have to put anything in the meters well they do now what's that they know now well they, they trust me they they knew before tom that's like nobody puts any money in the meters between eight and nine because they know there's no enforcement so they're part of csca so i would have to find out from them to find out how any kind of changing to their schedule would work. And one last question. Are you related to Julie Jerusalem by any chance? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> I, I, that, it was one, one of my neighbors growing up. So I just, you know, just wanted to ask the question. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've been very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, member of the budget committee is Mr. Aubrey. Glenn, unmute yourself, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief, yes. um, that was a very good presentation. To, I think back to your, your PowerPoint, um, you mentioned three goals for next year. The um, increase, I think it was the foot patrols, community engagement, and yes. community liaison officers. Mm -hmm. So could you describe sort of the deployment impact of that on of your current force. In other words, what will change? For example, if you have more fo foot patrols, let's say on the avenue, how does that affect your bike? Um, the I think it was five officers that were in doing bike, patro bike patrols. And that's part one. Part two is, part one is the deployment of your force. Part two is, training and any overtime related to fulfilling those goals. Okay, so yeah, so the, the foot patrols would have to be manpower permitting. Um, so, you know, depending on the officers that are currently working, I, I, there wouldn't be able to be an every day from a certain time to a certain time. It would be based on availability um, of the department when we could have that. Uh, so I, what I foresee doing is a couple of hours throughout the day, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, having officers um, on foot patrol engaging with store owners and, and with the community. Um, in terms of increasing community engagement, that's something that was also talked about as part of police reform. So whether that um, includes having forums, uh, topic specific or just um, general Q&A type things um, having the coffee with a cop. Um, so things of that nature, we were also planning on doing, um, collaborating with LMCTV to do like 10 minute segments uh, about topic specific items that the community might be interested in. Uh, also with the community liaison officers, that's something else that would be manpower permitting where we might have officers out there, um, especially uh, with members of the Hispanic community, um, you know, trying to um, gain their trust um, and confidence in the police department um, being um, more open to reporting any types of crimes that they might be fearful of, of coming forward now. Um, and also with the increased community engagement is show the diversity that we do have in the department 
um, it appears that a lot of members of the community don't realize that we do have uh, a diverse police department. Um, in terms of training, so as I indicated, there are some of the trainings that we can do in-house that shouldn't really cost any money. Um, because of, I guess, the one good thing or that came out of COVID was the ability to be able to Zoom and have trainings that way. So this ABLE training, we'll be able to do it that way in terms of having our own officers train our own. Also the de-escalation training that I spoke about, we had two officers attend a train the trainer course the end of January. So they'll be able to instruct the officers here uh, in the department. So in terms of additional trainings, there might be some certification training that officers might have to receive um, as part of accreditation, but I won't know that yet. Okay, thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Anybody uh, else for the budget committee? No. All right, uh, any, any other questions for the police department from the board of trustees or from staff even? In terms uh, of your overtime, can you give me a, um, a better feel of how that is being implemented? How's so being in terms of what? Well, you, <clears throat> in terms of you have five hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars or whatever in overtime. Uh, so. Can you give us a little bit more insight of how that is being, you know, realized? Yep. So some of it, some of it could come from events that happen within the village, whether that's parades, um, block parties, um, special events, fireworks nights, things like that, where we need additional personnel. Uh, they would be paid for that. There's also the investigatory process. If we have the officers completing investigations uh, during arrest. Uh, there'll be, there could be overtime related to that. Um, and then also other details that happen throughout the village. And also if there's a major crime, right? Of course. So um, that's where the, that's how we're using the money at this point is up. Um... Right now, yes. Um, and also right now we have some officers out on a uh, line of duty injury. So if there are shortages in patrol, we might have to utilize overtime for that as well. So with the line of injury that we have, which is fairly significant, and you know, for the size of our force, is there a common thread as to how that's occurred and think what we could do to try and minimize or prevent it? Well, I believe at least half of them were uh, accident related, not the officer's fault. So unfortunately, that isn't something that we would be able to prevent. Um, so the other items, it's a, it's a matter of we have um, we do have safety meetings to talk about how to keep officers safe, stopping you know any kinds of slip trips and falls, um, you know looking around headquarters, making sure that the facility is safe. So those are some items that we're trying to do if we see there's any kinds of an issue, whether it's um, building wise or something like that to address it so that there isn't a potential for officers to get injured. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Chief, thank you for your first presentation before the board. Thank you. Uh, you did an excellent job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate uh, what you do and the other 50 sworn officers of the village and the staff that work under you. Uh, thank you for keeping us safe. I know this has been a trying year for everyone and uh, we uh, have relied on our police department and they've come through every step of the way. I really appreciate that, thank you. All right. That seems to conclude tonight's festivities. Uh, we meet again on Wednesday night. And who, who, who's up at bat Wednesday night? Bobby? Wednesday night is recreation and parks. Okay. So we'll have Mr. Ahn and Mr. Pinta. That's correct. One quick question for Augie. I'm sorry. Uh, 33 
21 meter repair is under who, who under, under which department is that? How, when, when we will get there? Do you hear me? Yes, I do. I was hoping Dan would answer. Yeah, I mean, it goes I, under the village manager. Yeah, that's, I thought you were going to answer. Did we review that? Did we review it? I don't think we did. Um, uh, we have sure not we reviewed it. Yeah. No. Yeah. We always miss, a, I, 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 I've been following that for years now, and there's a lot of things that sometimes we don't cover. And while we're looking at all departments, so I don't know, we're going to do that sweep. We, so why, why don't we, the next meeting, uh, we'll, we'll squeeze the meter repair. Yeah, that's. Well, it, it's just one example of, of actually many. That's, that's the thing. We need to group certain things, like under what departments. So I'll try to identify a few, but there are some things that we, we, not, we never cover. Um, this is one example. So let, let, let's let's uh, all think about that and see how we can really rub, rub everything. Okay, absolutely. But but this one, this, this one it's, it's, it's maybe one mm -hmm. question or small, simple, but in order to have consistency, that's key. And just before we, uh, I, I, I think we should uh, keep in mind uh, what, what uh, Chief Costa said about the $5,000 increase in, in, um, in training because of for a department of that size that has been doing almost nothing this year, I know they are they are in need of that. So just just keep it keep 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 that in mind as we do the final adjustments because it's it's just it's it's just um, you know very a fraction. But I don't know if fractions are important this this days, but but it may mean a lot in 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 this in in especially for that department. So so I I just just let's keep that from this. From this session. You got it. I think that's okay. a good point. Point well taken. Tom, All right. Tom, Tom. Is there a motion to adjourn. No, excuse me. We agreed that we were going to discuss a when we were going to discuss revenues. Did ben we not? Has his hand up. Well, Laura, what did you say? I'll get to Dan in a second. But Glenn still has his hand up. I don't know if that's another question. All right, well, let's do it, Trustee Natchez. Uh, I, I, I don't think what, that what? we need additional information at the moment from staff on the revenues and the breakdowns. It's a issue of a, a philosophical approach of what we're doing. And well, what's the philosophical? We have, <clears throat> we have revenues that are higher than we've ever had before that are being used for, for the budget. Okay, so that, that's not philosophy. That's, uh, that's, that's a yes, it is. Well, uh, it, it, so I, I, why don't we wait until Wednesday and when Jerry's here and we'll make a, a date to discuss it when we can ask them when they can have realistically have uh, cleaner numbers or, or explain the numbers more fully that we want that pushed up but I think it's fair to wait till Wednesday when Jerry's here. I think if you want to wait till Wednesday to confirm it, but I think we would like to try and set a target. It, it, it's the way this we have it, we have it now at the end. Victor raised the, the point at the last meeting that is concerned about, you know, focusing on, the, on that and the uh, concepts and approaches at the end where you're basically locked in or have no time to do anything. I understand your point. And I'm not saying that we're gonna to wait to the end, but I'm saying wait till Wednesday to talk with the chief budget officer when he's here to see what would realistically be a time where he would have cleaner numbers for us. Instead of just arbitrarily picking a date tonight, wait two days. <laughs> I think a good, a good proposal could be to have ask us Jerry to see if on the tenth we could review we could review this because maybe Augie already can start looking at this. I know I know this conversation started already and there were some movements there were some adjustments, so we can on Wednesday ask him if on the following Wednesday we can review. Uh, revenues. Yeah, so I'm fine with asking him on Wednesday if we can review next Wednesday. I'm just not fine with doing it That's now. Kind of a goal. I, I want to have the input of the gentleman when he's here. But I'm fine with that approach. 
Okay. So we'll have that discussion at the end of Wednesday. It's, it's obviously unrealistic to have him uh, have that information by Wednesday. He's out today and as he, as he sent us uh, a uh, email last week, everything I mean, he has to do in the next two weeks. Can I just get a sense, are you expecting this to be a, a one or two hour conversation or like a 30 minute add on to a meeting of what are you, because there've been several emails and I understand that, you know, staff are calculating based on certain principles and understandings. And I think I may be wrong, but I think what you want to talk about is you're, you're questioning the way they calculate revenues. And no, I'm, not, I'm not quite calculating. I'm not. Well, that's part of how I mean, part of the issue, but that's not the that's not the bulk of it. Do you want to give me a heads up? I'm not interested in necessarily going through every line item if that's what you're you know in oh. talking about the line items. No, nope. but but we've had some emails. You know, like I don't think your sales tax projections are correct, and they've explained why they think they are correct. And so, are we just going to have a more detailed discussion of that? I mean, I'm just trying to can't you know schedule looking at my calendar how much time you're looking to discuss this philosophical issue about revenue. Uh, it depends on how, how how everybody reacts in, to different things and what they're comfortable with. I don't know. I can't. I can't predict that. And the only thing I would the thing I would say. I mean, I don't know. I think I think if we fold it into one of our other conversations, I mean, things are evolving. I took a seminar last week with the controller, and the sales tax news was not good. You know, they're they're thinking that it's not going to be strong. So. Um, I don't know whether there's been something different in the last month. I guess we talked about it about three weeks ago, but I just, I think, you know, we, you know, I guess we have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. All right. Well, and, and let, 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 you know, maybe on a, the third, we'll schedule for the 10th and have it. But, you know, if people have more concrete ideas and suggestions, please share them so that we're all working from the same page. All right, we'll talk to Jerry on Wednesday. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, so, did, did Glenn have a question first? See if Glenn has a question. Maybe perpetually. Sorry, Glenn, did you want to say I, something? I have one quick question. Um, we have a lot of details out right now uh, because of all the construction that uh, Con Ed is doing. Uh, are we uh, paying the officers at a regular rate or are they getting paid overtime for that duty? Thank you. Chief, you know the answer to that question, Augie? Depends on what hours they're working. It's usually on an overtime basis. Okay. The, the overtime is the rate that was established by the board for that for that type of approach. That Other, is, is, um, am I correct, Chief? Yes. What, what what the board established was how to charge that rate. What price correct. to charge that rate? The rate of overtime is you know part of their negotiated contract. So we didn't change the rate of overtime. We changed how we charge back the time. Right, how they're billed. Mm -hmm. Reimbursement rate. Correct. Reimbursement rate. It, did, it didn't have to do with the uh, officer's pay. Right. All right. So, I had a motion and a second. So moved. Uh, Ms. Lucas, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.